Hello and welcome to the CFMS webinar on the Hyperflux project. My name is Andre Simpoeru. I'm a CFD engineer at the Center for Modeling and Simulation. And today I'm going to talk about the high order flux deconstruction methods applied to industrial applications from different sectors. The Hyperflux project is led by the Center for Modeling and Simulation, which is a specialist in high value design. CFMS provides a whole range of services, such as technology services, benchmarking and testing, and on-demand HPC access. The Hyperflux project is a collaborative research project involving CFMS, Imperial College, and Xenotech, with the aim of making accessible the state-of-the-art high-order flux reconstruction methods to industry. Test cases were supplied by industry organizations, including Airbus, ARA, and Rolls-Royce. The solvers used in this project are PyFAR, which is an open source tool developed at Imperial College, and ZCFD, which is a commercial closed source programmable Python front end. Both software can target multi core hardware such as GPUs. CFMS can prove the new technology by connecting the industry and academia. Early access and technology assessment in the use of high order methods can be provided in a neutral and independent framework. Hyperflux comes to address some of the existing problems related to industrial applications such as unsteady vertical flows such as sub-off models, separated and transitional flows with shocks such as high lift configurations and flow around buildings as well as unsteady loadings on a car. As part of the industrial applications we are going to present only some of the test cases. As verification test case, the laminar flow over a cylinder has been considered in order to check the temporal accuracy of the solver at a Reynolds number equal to 150, based on, diam on the diameter of the cylinder. The Mach number for this flow was 0 0.2 and the mesh consisted of approximately 12,000 cells, uh, hex type uh, cells, which is fairly coarse considering that for the finite volume approach, 200, more than 250,000 cells were needed in order to capture the correct frequencies. The, correct, the computed order was P2 and the time chosen was 0.02 of a second. The time matching is performed using a dual time stepping technique with an implicit LUSGS time integration scheme. The picture on the left hand side shows the flow field colored by the velocity and it highlights the two shading uh, vortices. It can be pointed out that the detail can be captured with relatively coarse grid, which is an advantage of the new technology. The plot on the right hand side shows the history of the lift coefficient highlighting the laminar shading. In order to be cap to capture, uh, convergence was established to be 10 to the minus 5 for the pseudo time cycles before matching in time. It can also be seen that the Struhel number was predicted quite well and in agreement with the experiment. The high order simulations must be affordable and therefore for high Reynolds number flows a transformed KLN Omega SST model was implemented. As part of the benchmarking, the Naga 0012 test case from NASA was considered in order to verify the model. The Reynolds number is 6 million at 0 degrees angle of attack and the Mach number for this flow is 0 0.15. The picture on the top shows the turbulent kinetic energy contours captured with an L2 mesh, which consisted of approximately 14,000 hex cells using a P2 polynomial. The picture on the bottom shows the velocity field at 0 degrees angle of attack. This case shows that the high order methods can be combined with near wall turbulence modeling. Another challenging benchmark is the NACA 0021 at 60 degrees, which can be found on the IRCOPTAC database. Existing studies prove that the current RANS models are unable to predict the shading frequencies as well as the massively separated regions behind the wing. The viscous Navier Stokes solver was employed using a P3 hex element, which consisted of approximately approximately 19 million degrees of freedom. The picture on the left hand side shows a snapshot in time of the velocity field and it can be seen that the details can be captured on relatively coarse grid when compared with the image on the right hand side which represents a fine resolved DES simulation of the same test case. It can be seen in the following video the two large vortices. The shedding is mainly conducted by the separation of the flow at the leading edge of the wing. In order to capture this, high fidelity simulations are required. The civil sector has been attracted in the past years by the ability of CFD to better design buildings. In this test case, the flow around two buildings, considering the flow only in the horizontal direction, using a P2 hex mesh, 
at 10 meters per second is computed. One of the common challenges in this sector is that in order to better predict the loads accurately, the boundary layers have to be resolved. Therefore, near wall modeling is required. The figure on the right hand side shows the difference between a high order mesh and the equivalent number of degrees of freedom of a finite volume mesh. The image shows the flow field colored by the velocity and it can be seen the wake interaction of the two towers along with the streamlines in the wake of the high building. The high order simulations have to be affordable and therefore a simple study has been conducted in order to check the price performance benefit of the new methods. The viscous high order code using a P2 hex mesh using an explicit time integration was employed. The CFL equal to 0 0.2 with no convergence acceleration techniques and approximately the same number of degrees of freedom and number of CPUs was used. The finite volume code was employed using a second order, a standard second order scheme using an explicit time integration. Both solvers were run for approximately 5,000 cycles and the convergence was checked. From the following table, it can be seen that the higher order code is doing more work per cycle when compared with the standard finite volume code. Also, there is a factor of 8 in this partial efficiency since more detail can be captured using approximately the same number of degrees of freedom. It has been experienced that the high order simulations tend to converge to a steady state solutions by a factor of two. Overall, the new approach gives performance benefit, gives a performance benefit of 9.6 and including the benefit of the new multi-core platforms such as GPUs, the overall benefit is around 33x when compared with the finite volume code. The vertical flow around the simple DARPA sub-op model has been computed at the Reynolds number 4000. The free stream Mach number was set to 0 0.1 and the mesh consisted of 340,000 cells, unstructured mixed and tets, uh, unstructured, mixed unstructured tets and prisms in order to prove the usage of the unstructured meshes using high order flux reconstruction methods for complex geometries. In the following figures, it can be seen that the model has been considered a challenge in the industry since the Hochschild vortex generated by the sail interacts with the appendage and therefore a lot of cells are required in order to capture this effect with the current second order technique. Also it can be seen the unsteadiness of the flow captured with relatively coarse grids. In the end I would like to thank you for watching this webinar and also would like to thank Innovate UK and EP Innovate UK for funding this project and EPSRC for supporting the work done at Imperial College. For more information on the industrial use of the high order CFD, please contact myself on the email address provided below and or on the telephone number. Thank you very much.